Hi there, my name is Fraser Simons. This is my channel, Springboard Thought. I talk about books, I talk about tabletop role-playing games, I do actual plays of those, which means I am in a video playing a tabletop role-playing game, and I do some other things as well. Today I'm going to be talking about a book named All's Well by Mona Awad, who is, I hope, somewhat famous, and hopefully you've heard of her because she's fantastic. She rose to somewhat more acclaim than her first book with Bunny, a very strange genre-bending horror fantasy magical realism thing where a MFA student uh, basically writes a thesis in which her experiences and her feelings and her uh, values and stream of consciousness thoughts are all bundled into one book where a lot of weird wacky stuff happens. It is one of my favorite books. I love that book. Completely fantastic. So I had a few, um, I guess you could say expectations for All's Well. And you'll see Bunny is uh, referenced in a lot of reviews for this book, at least the ones that I have seen so far books not out yet but on Goodreads people such as me that use NetGalley to get uh, initial copies of the book to evaluate it um, have their hands on it for a few months now and similarly to Bunny this is a genre bending kind of horror kind of fantasy take and it's about a woman who uh, has chronic pain and nobody else around her uh, believes her at all and it's about like the loneliness of that and sort of just what it does to a person when uh, they're not believed and um, their body sort of betrays them or at least the there's no understanding about it for me the touchstone of this is I have a few friends I've known who have had fibromyalgia, which is like a very recent thing. And up until like only this year or last year, a lot of doctors wouldn't even verify that that was a real thing. And so they were going through something similar to this where they had just massive amounts of pain. It varied per person, but it was chronic, it was pervasive. And they, they just kept trying all these different approaches from holistic to Western medicine to Eastern medicine. And uh, they're just trying to learn more about their, their body and to fix whatever's going on with them, even though in most cases, people have no idea what that could be. As you can imagine, probably the first quarter of the book is difficult subject matter and it's, um, very intense and visceral in the true sense of the word. I think that word is overly used, but in this sense, it's actually true. And um, yeah, you just, you alternately feel very bad for the character and also har feel hard to empathize with her because you're not going through what she's going through and you probably haven't unless maybe you have. I haven't, so it was hard for me. She understandably becomes very irate and short of uh, temper and patience and at work where she is the head of the drama department, she is going to put on a play called All's Well That Ends Well by Shakespeare. And it's a play that nobody else is behind except for her. And throughout the novel, you'll learn why that is, but there's heavy, um, nostalgia and let's just say baggage and personal things that are happening with that because she was a actress before this chronic pain started happening and one of her favorite um, things that she ever did was putting on All's Well and she was a specific character that means a lot to her um, and so Ever, the whole world seems to be aligned against her. Uh, it's very intense, like I was saying, and, and very... It's an interesting experience because lashes out constantly, but 
you feel like it's justified as well. And even the people that are close to her and know of her pain, there's that underlying sort of notion that they have and that they express in their mannerisms and what they say and everything. Or at least that's what it seems like because the uh, narrative is through a first person lens that uh, they don't really, if they don't believe her, then they certainly are fed up with her basically. And they treat her like she is kind of annoying and a just a somebody that's not really valued and treasured and it's just a very sad outlook. But then about 25-30% of the way into the book it flips the script and that power imbalance that uh, she was feeling is completely flipped into her favor. She no longer has chronic pain but the way in which she alleviates that pain is uh, problematic and um, indicative of the power that has been upheaved uh, within the book. I don't want to give too much away, but she's able to overcome the pain in certain ways, and that allows also for her to show different aspects of her personality. And she is obviously more happy and just like a, a completely different person, but she's also saturated with the power that she has and saturated with the, um, basically her, her value that she now has again, uh, because of the alleviation of her pain, which only starkly puts into contrast the first half of the book. So it, she's a very complex character. I really love her character, even when she is being <laughs> really mean to the people around her and uh, the book explores in a lot of ways the ways in which people who are traumatized can perpetuate trauma onto other people and the ways that they cope with that trauma and the pain and the all the different societal issues around that and pleasure and uh, pharmaceuticals and just the way everybody views uh, pain in general, but specifically women's pain. It also chronicles, of course, the the way in which All's Well does or does not come to pass at the school that she's teaching at, and her personal problems, how she deals with them. So it's a very, very, very interior uh, book. So if you are not into that, then I would probably skirt this one, but it's similar to Bunny, as I said before. It, um, you don't really get other people's um, point of view in the story, uh, and that only feeds into the sort of angst and strangeness that is <laughs> the point of view of the main character. It's very well done and the point of view really serves a point in this. So it's not just the easiest way to tell the story. In fact, it's probably the hardest way to tell this particular story. I think third person omniscient or uh, some other view might have made this easier, but living in her head makes you just have to contend with all the various thoughts that ha she has. It is very darkly comedic sometimes. She's whip smart. She's very sexy in her own way. Um, and she is yeah, having to contend with all these wild things and it truly makes you think about societal aspects that people usually don't think about, which I think is the main point of this book. I will say that uh, I think there's some meta stuff happening with the All's Well That Ends Well play that I'm not familiar with, but if you are, you probably will get more out of this book than I did because it certainly seems to parallel certain characters in the um, uh, in that play, especially the character that Liz is uh, caught up in and and trying to sort of enliven and play herself 
through a different char uh, different character who is playing that character in the play. <laughs> so yeah, there's it's just incredibly incredibly good. I I very much recommend this book to absolutely anybody, especially those who already like Mona Awad, but if you like unhinged women, if you like the themes that it is going into, just be aware that, like I said, for the first quarter of the book, it is hard going. It was, it was tough to deal with her um, inner turmoil and her pain and, and just experiencing the gaslighting that she was experiencing. And it's, you know, it is what it is, it's it's something that you I think is so important that you should deal with it but it's definitely tough I put the book down a few times just because I was feeling uh, very drained and didn't have a lot of uh, hope for humanity as that was going on because it's just it resonated so much with me with the way that we treat people, especially with chronic pain and old people, women in general, it's, it's just heavy. It's heavy is what it is. But there is also hope. And like I said, it's very, it's darkly comedic, but it's, it's very funny, I thought. And uh, in surprising ways, sometimes like you, it's very much find the, find the lighter side of things, even when things are very dark. And um, I just haven't, I haven't really read anything like it, and I ended up giving it four stars overall just because the quarter half was punishing and brutal, and it did make me want to put the book down more than I wanted to, even though it has um, Moda Awad's voice, which is just uh, something I click with immediately. She has... Uh, talent for diction and sentence by sentence it's so well constructed paragraph by paragraph it's it just seems meticulous without being curated and it's it's just a she's just a special writer that I will instantly buy every single time I will definitely consume anything that she has to offer in the future and this book is no different so check it out when it comes out all's well I will say I like what I like the uh, cover, and specifically um, the one that I'll show anyway, a lot more than the other one, which is like a smiley face made of pills um, with the comedy mask for, that you would see in um, drama, um, whatchamacallit, comedy and tragedy. But um, it's just not that interesting to look at so I'm curious to see if one is the UK and one is uh, North America or what's going on with that. I sure hope Canada gets the one that I like more because I'll be picking this book up for sure. Anyway let me know what you think about the book if you've tried it out on NetGalley already. If you see this video after it's come out I'd love to know what you thought of it especially compared to uh, Bunny. I think it's you know in conversation with each other there's some things that I uh, held close to the vest with this review just because the arc specifically says not to go into too much depth about it and some things might have been changed and all that kind of stuff so who knows I tried to keep it vague and to the core conceits of the title that I'm sure won't be changing but it's always too bad when you can't uh, quote specific passages and do pull quotes and all that kind of stuff. So, oh well. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments and I will see you next video. Thanks very much. Bye.